iodine? Shit, I don't have iodine, do I? In a strange world. Oh shit, iodine? Yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. Iodine is someone else's tier one. Rust. It's rust. Fuck rust. Oh, okay. So surprisingly, I have that. Do you? Yes, 500 build grist, 100 rust, 50 copper, and 10 lead. I have that. Um. Okay, I don't alchemize that. It, that yet. Your reply eventually convoys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of medical attention. You are also really, really lonely. This not Variska is laughing at me. This not Variska is laughing at you? E yes. Too much this this thing at my doorstep. Wishing the Nami in any capacity. A hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with manacle laughter. How oh, yeah. You apologize for your presumptuous request, you hang your head, turn around. Uh, oh yeah, in case we in case you didn't in case you're wondering, I think the control object for me is going to be old record players. Because, fuck it, I can't think of anything else. I mean, some... My old time player used this fucking watch. I would weep for you, really, except that crying out of three eyes gets messy. Okay. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside, or if she just got you to stay longer, so she could insult you some more. Trying to make stubborn calling you confrontational on your friend decides what to do with you. Okay, so there were two ogres, one just got hit. That makes this an even fight. I wish.
Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend! Oh gosh. All you have to do is try to not fuck up. At all. For many hours. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreements coming from one of my friends. Oh, you are actually talking not Briska. I, I told you that's what I was doing. Wait, it, this is the one they labeled not Risto, right? Uh, no. I don't think so. No? But I, I thought it was supposed to be the blue one. With the eyes. There's many blue and the eyes. Thing. But there's only one with eyes. Oh. oh, her her bullet points are bloodthirsty on main, probably Vriska, and fresh to death sentence. Oh no, not Vriska's L word. Yeah, not Vriska's L word. She is probably Vriska. Damn it! Fucking blue bloods. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments cause me any inconvenience. Uh, okay, this is most definitely Briska. You're a dick. I basically just created the Scarlet Rivitar, but not quite as powerful. Okay, I'm back. Took you long enough. Okay, so now that I've killed Sorry. the ogre, I'm alchemizing and I'm alchemizing new weapons. I just alchemized something. I just created something with my control object, which is uh, old record players. 
Um, nice. I created the Music Maker, which is Blade Kind has 1d12 and is delicate with the usage of time travel. That's pretty cool. And now I'm gonna alchemize it with a picture of a frog. Because of course you are. Uh, also, how did my uh, liquor cabinet thing go? Did it help? Well, well I'm, I'm pissed, pissed at you for ruining my cabinet. cabinet. You can alchemize more liquor. However, you knocked you one off. You still have all of the liquor. Just saying. You, you knocked one down, and now I'm being a dumbass and fighting the other. Okay, that's good. But don't worry. Don't worry. You still have all your liquor. Only some of them probably shattered with my rough shaking and making them fall onto the floor. Only some of them. Yeah, only some. You still have most of your liquor. You're, you're fine. Oh, oh. I think she got off. Yeah. Or I had to go. Did you not see in general? She said I probably have to go. Ah. Nah, so we left off actually getting quite a bit of progress done. Next time. Yeah. God dear. Maybe. There. See, I at least did things now. I didn't even have to poke you. I'm so proud. Are you really, though? A little bit. It's a very, it's a very kinky baby. Not sure. He struggles to say help. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her fingers. Ooh. Help low. By which I mean, hello, of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress chosen by the great and beautiful... Not Vriska or Vriska wannabe. Whatever. She's my savior, my reason for being, and I'm nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me, if she'd permit it. Okay, what the fuck? You're a weird person. Hey, I'm just the one reading a script here. Is this not the script of your character? You turn away from the boy. You don't want to ever hear anything he has to say ever again. Ever. Wonderful. Hmm, don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. You're led to a dark corner of this swell. You're gonna call it as you see it. To this dungeon. Your new friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children, and presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's really not ideal. Then again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It'll save some time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time. You doubt this because it's still in the box. Looking completely untouched since it was moved here. It's a box containing a table. A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to it. I don't like where this is going. You chose this. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, oh, aren't you happy to be with your new friend? Send the cavalry. <laughs> Send the cavalry. Uh, I think it's too late for the cavalry, man. No one can hear you scream anymore. I 
I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver, in case you need it. I will assume other required tools are within the box. You take the screwdriver with your non-broke arm. This is not exactly what you had in mind. Then again, you don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal, a friendly banner, banter, perhaps a sling for your broken arm. Too hopeful, man, too hopeful. Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on, before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. I don't like where this is going at all. You're gonna eat a troll. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. The video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of the screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the box. And other rectangles oh. contain shots of other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them too? You had no idea this friendship came with a perk of instant stardom. Yeah, that's... Sure, that's what that's called. Totally. Ah. Instant stardom. Are you happy? No, I'm not. You're famous now. Now, you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you, holding a chalice. Swishing around the liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to their labels in the instructions. You try to remember the last time you assembled anything like this. You don't recall enjoying it. To be honest, this doesn't look like this will be fun. She frowns at you. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's what you were born for, you say. As you swoosh the screwdriver That's around. That's something you should say. Hmm? Jesus. I'm just reading the script. He's signing up to be on that table. I was born for this <laughs> idea, Sparks. Demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It means nothing. Mm-hmm. Yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the bag full of screws. Jesus, there's like 50 screws. Where do these even go? Judging from the picture, the table doesn't even seem this complicated. You look at your screwdriver and study it. Every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this even have an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. You look around, but you don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into the darkness? You think you lost some of the screws too. God damn it. You wonder what to do next. A, get the hell out of there. B, just do your best assembling the table. This is what friends are for. Are you literally building a table on stream for the world? Uh, apparently. That's... It's a torture table. <laughs> and remember that there's angles of cameras showing caged, trapped, what, was it kids around you? Yep. And your weird hunched form. You decided it would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend probably consider it bad form. 
You'll just make do and twist in all the screws by hand. Ouch. Your broken arm isn't making this any easier. You favor the other and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against each other. While you nudge them into position, with your legs so the screw holes align. It's really frustrating. You're not going to lie. As, you, as you're twisting in the first screw, the grooves slip, and the screw gets stuck, but you've already turned it in too tight. Now it's hard to get it out. You twist in reverse. Oh, that's your sword's back. Your finger slips and Slip the back. table pieces start to slide. Oh, they turn the fall again. You react to catch, but it's too late. The heavier piece tips over and slams you in the broke ribs on its way down. Ow! It hits the floor with a bang. The stuck screw pops out and goes bouncing 10 to 15 feet. Settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. God, I'm gonna have to go get that. Good. Good. She takes another sip from her chalice and settles even more comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? You think she's enjoying watching you struggle? Maybe too much. Nevertheless, you continue. A friend is a friend, and you don't like to let down your friends. You've committed yourself to this project. <laughs> Why did I sign up for this? Because you were lonely. You want a friend. Even if that friend happens to be a sadist that is trying to make you popular on the deep web. How dare you, sir? What do you mean, how dare you, mate? Turn, Turn your, your attention back, back to the, the table, table and try a different strategy. You place the biggest piece, the platform, flat on the floor. The legs would point upward if they were attached. You position one leg in the right spot, in alignment. Sit on the table platform and steady the leg with your feet. You grab another screw and concentrate. Your new friend sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, for watching this sort of activity to make someone happy. But you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted, important even. If only somewhat menial to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. At the corner of your eye, you notice one of the cage kids reaching out. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from underneath its hiding place. God damn, no one told me there were Jedi here. There are Jedi? Well, apparently. That troll just used the troll force to move a screw. Telekinesis? impressive. The troll used troll force. Telekinesis. Troll force. Telekinesis. Troll force. Screw you. No. By means of democracy, it is troll force. Yeah, you're outnumbered. No. You can't deny democracy. I can deny whatever the fuck I want. Are you sure? Yes. Britain tried that. And? Do you remember what happened then? Artada does not look at the kid, but sneers. She reaches towards him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. You notice the screws slowly slide back into its hiding spot. She releases him from his breathing problems, resumes her expression, and takes another sip from the chalice. Uh, okay, I just watched her choke out a kid. Um, why am I still here? You guessed that was against the rules. You decide to make note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. 
About an hour later, you have all four legs on and some other things attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using only your good arm. It seems she may have forgotten about the final screw. You doubt the table needs it. You decide you won't bring it up if she won't. You give it a test. It's pretty damn wobbly, since you were only using your hands to screw it in. Your friend doesn't seem to mind. She reclines and has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored. She a handy look. She's finished her drink and the chalice is on the side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor towards her. It looks like a uh, spider the size of an average dog. What the fuck? Its abdomen is pretty large. Actually, you think it's a giant tick. Yes, that that's that's what it looks like. A tick. That is not good. I don't that's wink, wink, not, nudge, that's nudge. Not good to see. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It settles just in front of her and she puts her legs up on top of it and crosses them. Wait, fix a tick. No, it's a tick. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Now, let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down on the rather rickety table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. Um, no. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up embarrassed. Again, without looking at the cage kid, she raises an arm towards him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his cage, which apparently wasn't locked. He shuffles over to your table and lies down on it. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do from here. And I'll just combine it still. <laughs> Caligulus, please. What? Also what? He's reading us a story. I don't want to hear this story. <laughs> well, don't you want to hear get like to Homestuck, Homestuck sadomasochism fan fiction? Yes, if we're going to be playing Homestuck D and D, then you get to listen to Hive Swap Friend Sim. But Hive Swap is dumb. One can say that about all of Homestuck. Yeah, really. Besides, this one has extra sadomasochistic vibes. Yes. Oh yeah, I know, I'm aware. It would be terrible for us. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what that is. Oh, you are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of stickball played on a table. Got it? You don't, but you nod anyway. Now, go to it. Hmm. You shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do. Since the table has shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge tick-like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. She plops the thing down on his chest. The kid is now rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark, rust-colored blood dribbles from the place on his neck. Our daughter fucking hell, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Oof. Kid just made a snack. Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process, proud almost. Then she looks at you expectantly. Yeah, well, you don't know what she means. The final oh, screw. Lucius. Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it in where it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't keep 
the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course. What were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. You stoop very low to the ground on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer under the large edifice. It's dark and goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn screw to roll. But you take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm. Come back empty. It must be farther. You think you can see it. Yes, that must be it. Just a little farther. You have an idea. A tool would be very helpful. Guess the screwdriver will help after all. How did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. You think you're liking her more every minute. You grab the screwdriver and feel around. Yes. You've got it. You carefully scrape it closer to yourself and pick it up. You then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you did not screw. You slide under the table as a mechanic would with a car. There it is. The table's creaking and wobbling. The tick is really getting into its dinner. Oh, Jesus Christ. Maybe you should not play this game on Twitch. <laughs> well, it's too late now. All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the screw will help. Your friend returns to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and typing some remarks into the chat window. <laughs> this is very good material today. It's not often I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Go on, complete your project. This will be very good. I'm really bad with voices, aren't I? The worst. <sighs> you still think it's weird that she likes watching you do this. But you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose them, honestly. Oh, whoops, I misspelled that. You screw in the final screw. The stress on the table are causing the holes to misalign. This will not be easy. The tick shifts its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak. You nervously slide halfway out from under the table to check it out. Then pop. Then the sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is. You think a little too late. You really needed that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. The table comes crashing down on your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. Ow! You bellow in pain, flail to pull yourself out. Blood now covers my computer screen. You forget you're still holding the screwdriver. In your desperate flailing, you plunge the screwdriver into the fat of the tick, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, spraying your upper body and face. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. Haha, <laughs> you got a bad ending. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes. You can't imagine she's thrilled. Your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from under this damn table. You have an idea. With your broken arm, you start slapping the tick while yelling yeehaw. You clutch the screwdriver handle with your other hand. The blood gushing monster starts kicking and rearing, then blasts off across the room like a pig at a rodeo. Oh my god. <laughs> 
You this hold on for life. For the Still blind, but your plan worked. You've been pulled out from under the tomb you spent the last hour constructing. Now you're internet famous, too. Be happy. <laughs> As you and the blood spewing tick go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear someone cry. You guess your friend became distracted by, enough by your foolish display to cease her paralyzation and map it on the boy. Or maybe distracted is the right word. Maybe she's disappointed. Oh god, you might have ruined everything by now. The tick swerves and starts running upstairs. Ow, ow, ow. You feel every step on the way. It careens through the rest of the hive, crashing through the front door, and comes to a sudden halt. You're catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. You land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. Okay, th this was bad. But everyone makes mistakes, right? You can uh, still fix this friendship. <laughs> right? Well, you know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. She's standing in the doorway with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. You will not be my friend. Rejection! You got a bad ending! Okay, I think that was enough suffering. <laughs> There's... Two good ending, or there's one good ending and two bad ones. How is there a good ending to her? Oh god, how? You have to throw. The, you have to try to escape earlier. Well, that's nice. That went horrible. <laughs> Jesus. See, and you were just going all by voice. <laughs> oh no, I've, I've seen it. I saw the pictures. Uh -huh. Cheater. Yeah, I was going all by voice, but that sounded terrible. Oh, the visual adds so much more. Nice. Okay, so are we gonna roll the good ending? Or go with the hot dog boy? Mm. Go with hot dog boy. We're, We're going, going with hot, hot dog, dog boy. boy. Meat boy. Nice. I gotta go to bed though. So. No, you don't. Coward. I kinda do. Don't lie to yourself. Cool Swole's for also, nerds. I mean, I I'm still to gonna sit here. Pills, so. I'm I'm still gonna sit here and alchemize shit for like another fifteen minutes. Nice. I'll do that when I wake up, I guess. Why does this hot dog have horns? What the um, hell? Because it's a grub dog. Mildly concerned. Now remind me, why did Hussey write any of this? Um, if I can remind you that it wasn't Hussey who made any of this, it was all of his fan artists. Literally, he had no part other than writing the characters. Holy shit, Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Did you make a good weapon yet? No, okay, so do you remember the red scarlet ribitar that Dave tries to make, but can't because it costs too much? Vaguely? 
I essentially just tried to create an alternate version of it, and the amount of shit I would need to create it is 50,000 build grist, 50,000 garnet, 2,000 quartz, 10,000 diamond, and 200,000 iron. Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do for you there. Um, you're not. I can time travel now. Of course, he has time powers. The highest tier basic underling can drop up to 50,000 build grist. Jeez. Oh, I know. I know.
and you aren't sure what the creature's talking about. And your eyes drift towards the obvious target. That weird looking hot dog he holds. Looks really good. Your mouth waters noticeably. <laughs> no. Yeah, I knew it. You're just like all the rest. I know your agenda is to have me relinquish my food. Well, forget it. I've been tricked out of two others this week. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood, but I have some dignity. You don't know anything about his blood color, or why that matters. You're hungry. He didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his food. All you really want is a new friend. So you don't feel so alone? I see. You just want a friend. Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with my food in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get that greedy. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, you think? But it'd be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the uh, topic. At least your friendship's moving in the right direction. You ask if he lives nearby. Uh, yeah. Or, I mean, I used to. The place was uh, bombed by the drones a while ago. So now I don't have a hive. But I, I, I'm making it working. I, I, I make it work get out here. Foraging for food when I can. I am pretty good at it. Uh, talking to people and giving me food, I mean. You quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friends. Although you've had a rough. had a rush. Rah, had a rough crash landing here. Hungry and friendless. And uh, your arm's broken, probably. Your ribs, too. Enough self pity. This is about making a new friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Uh, are we friends? I like. Uh, like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we just slow down and see how things go? I'm not saying a bad question. I just think I should take some time to see if you're friendship material. <clears throat> Someone I can trust. Not just another looky-loo gunning for my food. Wow. Damn. You got out over your skis again. Of course he's right. Totally reasonable. You feel sure you can do whatever it takes to win him over. You make a mental notice to avoid looking at or mentioning his food. Since it seems to be a sensitive subject. thinking about food at all. It's like he is a holding one. I know one has ever brought up that they don't exist. Seems to notice on primal level your current non-food mindset. He smiles. You pay closer attention to his face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there, and a mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. friend this would be to have, you think? He's kind of adorable. If you disregard his attitude about food. Okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking of thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend. Nothing more. You wonder about his house. It got bombed? Oh, yeah, you know. 
routine drone pass through my hood. A little bombing, a little colon. That's how it goes around here. I was lucky. My Lucy, not so much. He's a guy. You don't know what a Lucis is, but you could probably deduce it was someone important who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide to play. The right play is to show sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes, I think. I enjoy other food as a way of recovering up the pain. They're so good, it's hard to stop. It's something we did together. <laughs> Cry. start talking about my food once more let's drop it dude please uh, don't bring it up again. you didn't bring it up but you don't want to correct him this boy is clearly grieving you see two faint tears roll down his cheeks from behind his messy bangs your heart can't take it you have to console this homeless boy then he'll be your friend Keep it simple and pat the boy on the back. Everything's going to be fine. Since you're his new friend, what? You killed him. Wait, what? You killed him. How? What? You just killed him. You killed him. You literally just killed him. What are you talking about? Just go on. Just go on. I'm off the grid. They think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door. Maybe I can live off the land. Scrounging for food wherever I may find them. Sounds like life. I miss my Lucis, but I think he'd be proud. If I can make it without him, I could survive on my own. I know he'd be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet. Maybe I can avoid taking the ordeal altogether. Can't test who you can't find. If I play my cards right, I could probably live to the ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. Hiding in alleys and sewers. Scraping together just enough protein to keep going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long. Since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. So I think I might be able to make this work. You're confused. But again, you don't want to be in play. Hold his hands together as to tell you not to be bothered. I can tell you're not from here, it's okay. Rust bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me live progressively longer the higher you go. Sea dwellers basically live, live forever. <clears throat> kind of crazy and unfair, but that's how it works. I'd be jealous of them, but I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have to live for very long. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle into a nice short ride, keep a low profile, take in some food along the way. Nothing wrong with that life if you ask me. You understand. It seems like a tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with his destiny, you might as well too. You author a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds not looking at the hot dog. He smiles. 
seems to be relaxing, gripping his food less tightly. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude towards food to be strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. There are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me? No offense, but <laughs> you are. Drones would vaporize a hornless, hornless scoop like you with no questions asked. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. You're not scared. You survive worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your sore ribs with your broken arm. And wince even harder because you're a goddamn idiot. <clears throat> oh, man. <laughs> Looks like your arm hurts. I guess it's broke. See what we can do about that. Here, hold this. He hands you his food without hesitation. Oh, wow, he wants you to hold it? Such a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. You take the food with your good arm being very careful. As if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and sets it on the ground. You avert your eyes for a moment, then realize it's silly. Nothing particularly indecent about this, you suppose? If he's comfortable, so are you. He then puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, and hands you his shirt. Here, I made a sling out of it. That should help. He's right. It does help. The broken arm's a lot more comfortable and secure. The shirt smells like meat. You can't tell if that's a bonus or if it's weird. You've decided it's a bonus. He's your new friend. It's your greatest common interest. Nice. You, you know, we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm officially ready to call you my friend yet, but we're getting close. Pushing all the right buttons, man, just... Being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means. You're so happy to hear this. It makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just really strange. And maybe this boy isn't really socialized properly. Or is, uh, Lucis, you guess? You think that might be his dad, but again, you aren't going to ask. Not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why go the moon? Gets a little closer and swoops a hand through that. Swoops a hand. Yeah. I can't talk. He gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes. Your heart beats a little faster. Puts a hand on your shoulder. You're starting to wonder. All his interest in getting this friendship. You hope that's what it was. You don't think you're raised for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship or companionship, but that's moving pretty fast for you. You're too nervous to make your feelings clear on all of this, because further you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest. Listen, dude. This food we both admire, I'm thinking. Maybe we share it. Sounds good. Oh, man. Yes. yes. Food sounds wonderful. You're so hungry. Besides, you know, beside yourself with gratitude that... Diamond? How do you pronounce that? Diamond? Damien? JP, help me. What? How do you pronounce his name? Damien. Damien? So that's what it is? Okay. Or Damon. Alright, whatever. Whatever works. Damon. He's willing to share with you something so precious. Here, I have an idea. I am not kissing the goddamn troll. Oh, you're kissing goddamn troll. I quit. No, no, go on. 
read it. No, nope. nope. rolling backwards. I'm getting this thing out of my face. You're killing it. You are. You literally kill him. How am I killing it? It says, uh, suggesting he and the MSPA reader both place a hot dog in their mouths and eat it, Lady in the Tramp style. However, the MSPA chokes on the meat and accidentally spits it in, back into Damien's face. Uh, Diamond is so shocked that he stumbles backwards, pulling a player with him, and after rolling down a hill, he hits his head on the concrete curb and is killed. The player attempts to hide the body in the bush, but is unsuccessful, and Ardata appears offering to clean up the mess. This results in the bad ending. You killed him. Why am I two for two with bad endings? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Eat the hot dog. I am not reading a lot of these words. I'm going to make that very clear right now. You have to admit, this is a good way to share the food item. On sharing it, it's split evenly. You absolutely loathe the idea of laying a friend down. Completely at odds with your values. You chomp down on your half the food as he does with his. Holy shit, this is good. Take, Take another, another bite. bite. It's eerily good at this game. It's throwing off your chewing, which makes you cough when you try and swallow your food. You don't feel like you can pause without breaking the eating rhythm. Might be what a bad friend would do. You get closer to him, which is in creating an imminent situation you aren't prepared for, or aren't sure how to handle. You haven't planned for it, and it's coming up. You try and swallow the food you've already ate, but you can't. You gag and cough it all up. Your friend recoils, absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with wide eyes. He says nothing for a moment, and puts his hand on to his throat. He's choking. He points at his mouth desperately. He needs you to do something. The Heimlich, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. You get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist in under his ribs, trying to dislodge his masticated. Yeah. Trying to dislodge the hot dog. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. And it really hurts. You have to make the sacrifice for your friend, though. Yes, a friend who may just try to trick you into kissing him. You're not sure how you'll navigate that tricky subject once he's breathing, but you'll deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save! 
pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. You try and try, his face is turning well... Not blue! Deep red? You guess because his... Blood is rust colored? Sure, makes sense. You yank one more time, broken arm, throbbing in pain. Huge glob, a chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball. It creates enough force in the opposite direction it causes you to actually lift him into the air. And you suplex him into the mud behind you. You in turn go tumbling over him, and the two of you are soon locked in to an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and, and roll, roll down, down the grassy incline towards, towards the nearby neighborhood, towards the street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street, but Damon's neck lands right on a sharp edge of the curb. After flipping into the air once or twice, you come down right onto his face. You hear a crack. Oh god, what have I done? Damon, you slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth, throat, throat, clear of hot dog debris. Oh, God. This can't be happening. You look around, panicked. This isn't what you need. All you wanted was a friend. I, I, you can't be held responsible for alien murder. You have to hide the body. Yeah, you see a couple of kids creeping out nearby houses to see all the commotion. There's no time. You gotta find a bush over there. Um, looks like a alien bush. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. Drag the vested shirtless carcass over to the, the bush. bush. You, you dump, dump the body in the bush, and it's, uh, it's not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal murder. Gotta come up with something better. Wait a minute. Someone's behind you. Uh, hello, stranger. Oh, don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. You killed him. Okay, well, that is... Um... That, that is enough of this for now.